looking at their shaman. You want to be looking at the healer on the side of Neat. Some mistakes came through in earlier matchups. Nick was really one of the MVPs of this squad. Will he be able to help carry his team to victory? Yeah, you guys don't believe in the Jamili Slayer Nick on the Assassination Rogue. Of course, we saw him on the subtlety before. Now he'll be showing his versatility on the two different Rogue specializations in the current meta. We see a Sap going out onto Korlek. They're looking to open up onto Tiber, but he's preemptively bare form. Should avoid a lot of that incoming damage. Yep, Swax is actually playing subtlety in this match, doing a big swap over onto Nick right away. Zero not pulling the trigger with his ice form, so still has that available for the next go. Korlek dropping that very crucial Earthen Shield totem. Now that that's out of the way, Shore has an opening to create some huge burst on Nick. Yeah, that's definitely something they're going to be looking for. They can either open onto Nick or Tybo. It looks like they're just going after Tybo right now. They already forced the Bark Skin. Now they force the Trinket with the Smoke Bomb. Two Trinkets down on the side of Need. They force the, uh, of course, Corlex with the Blind there as well. So definitely Tybo could be an opportunity. They get the full Polymorph, force out the Renewal. They're just tunneling down this Moonkin. And I actually like the strategy from the Rogue Mage Druid. It's a very safe and secure one. As long as you can keep Tybo inside that bear form, he will not be putting out that high damage zone. Yeah, not only that, but he can't get out the key cyclones that they need to actually close out the game. So keep the pressure on Tiber, keep the pressure on Nick. Here's a nice triple CC once again, beautifully done by Shore. Can they take down Tiber right here, right now? He's in a lot of trouble. And Shore, that was very clinical. That was expertly done. And they're going to put the first point on the board. That was neat. That was not neat. That was short. That was short, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, that was clinical. Ace, we haven't really talked about who it favored. The gates are open now. Vent, who do you favor with all of this room to, to prosper? Well, I mean, obviously, Neat thinks that this map is going to work out for them because they picked it, but I'm not as convinced. I feel like Mage Druid does pretty well on this map as well, so I don't think anyone's going to have a huge advantage. One thing that's kind of interesting as well is Nick is opting to play the Assassination spec against Shore, but he played Subtlety, I believe, against um, the Reject, so a little bit of a, a spec change there for Nick. He gets a sap over on Swack, looking to get this game started. Yeah, I think the assassination spec speaks to the fact that Neat are expecting this to be a long attrition game, and assassination obviously in that longer game does more damage, has the healing reduction from wound poison, and that's kind of like what they're playing to. They want to make Flop run out of mana, and they're doing a great opener here without using any cooldowns, forcing a ton of damage out, forcing a bit of mana. We can see the reverse go coming out of shore right now, but the big map, I mean, while it's great for Neat, they're going for this long game, so they pick a big map. The logic is flawless. Flop's just going to go for tricks. He's a resto druid playing RMD on the biggest map in the pool. So I don't agree with this map. All right, fair enough. There's a full blind on the flop right now. Is he going to trink it out? So actually, just shadow steps away. Very nicely done using shadow step defensively instead of offensively. And now Nick doesn't really have a target. I mean, I guess he can open on Cyril, put a little pressure there. But as a frost mage, you're feeling relatively safe. And neat. Unfortunately, uh, they're not going to get too much done with this setup. Flop able to comfortably sit all of that crowd control. Cyril and Swack just responding appropriately. They just kited away out of line of sight. And now Neat not pulling out any defensives. They might have to start playing a little defensive here if Shore decides to get aggressive. Yeah, and to the point we were talking about in the pregame, Tiber pushing up quite a lot here, forcing the Urban Shield Totem out from his Shaman. And Swack's just going to sit in stealth, wait for that Urban Shield Totem to expire. And now as it is starting to expire, they go for the triple crowd control. We see the blind. We see two trinkets forced on the DPS of Neat. Slight overlap here as Sarah looks to get the Polymorph. Well grounded by Korlik, though, and that will shut this go down for now, but the double trinket is a big win for sure. Yeah, Cyril committed his ice form there, and he definitely Nick didn't want to mess around with that, but he's forced into his first ice block, so Cyril could be a little bit vulnerable after this. He has one more. It is important to note, Swack, he has a smoke bomb, so he can definitely capitalize on a big setup onto Nick. If Nick overextends, he gets caught into a smoke bomb, and Cyril has his damage available. It could be very scary for Neat. Yep, Tiber trying to go for it. Here comes the smoke bomb from Swax, looking for the kill. There's no bark skin here, but not enough damage. I feel like unfortunately. that was rushed. I did not yep. like that use of smoke bomb at all. Like that was yep. the first. That was the first mistake I've really seen from yep. Shore. I would like to have just seen them wait for it. They didn't even commit the Shadow Blades. Of course, Ice Form coming off cooldown in about eight seconds. They didn't have to rush that because they forced the double trinket. Uh, it's had, they always had two minutes to do that setup. So slight little over-exaggeration there from Shaw, but obviously still looking good in this game. They still have opportunities with those trinkets on cooldown. Yep. We'll have to see what goes on right now. Sierra once again, he's extending very far, taking quite a bit of burst. But now Shore looking to get aggressive. Another big swap over onto Nick. Corlex caught into the stun. He has his trinket. He has Spear Link. He has to get it off. He oh. trinkets his Spear Link's way too late. Good. Actually, oh, Nick, he Nick shadow stepped out away. of it. That's a disaster for Neat, unfortunately. I don't know if that would have saved him. Probably would have, but... 
Yeah, oh, I, I, I want the old Nick with, back. Uh, Where, where's the sub, Nick? <laughs> yeah. I don't disagree with it that much. Okay, so getting a little bit more neutral here with Ash Main's fall. Will it be enough for me to tidy things up here? Otherwise, we are going to see Shore close this one out in a 3 0. And you can see it down there at the lower side of your screen. This is an appetizer for what we've got coming up next Casca's Angels against Super Frogs. But it's Shore, of course, looking to make it through to the Championship Sunday broadcast tomorrow. 2 0 up in this one. And I, I really do like their Rogue Mage Druid. And it's something Thing we talk about in North America, they, there aren't so many of those super, super high caliber rogue mage teams. So it's really nice to see the potential coming out from some of these newer players that we've only seen in these broadcasts a couple of times. And these guys have really got something and let's hope they can make it far in this tournament to stick together and do well. Yeah, let's see what Shore does. Nick's in a polymorph, Swack looking for a target. Uh, Flop gets interrupted there by Tiber. Tiber looking to get very aggressive with that. Zero gets swapped to Heatrink gets out, but now Shore decides to put some counter pressure out onto Tiber. Managed to get out the Earthen Shield Totem from Korlik, now making a swap. Actually, all just playing very defensive. They didn't like that opener very much. They just want to avoid this incarnation. And once that's gone, you can feel comfortable and confident to push forward and know that really Neat doesn't have that much damage for them. Yeah, and Nick on the assassination record. Good pre temporal shield coming out from Serral there. That actually uh, was huge because he got it before the Garrote, meaning that he's going to absorb all of this incoming damage from the Vanish of Nick. We saw the blind committed there onto Flop. They're looking for the Smoke Bomb swap over onto Tiber. Only Barkskin committed so far, looking to hold onto that Trinket. Full Polymorph over onto Korlik, but Mooncids are quite durable. If he can sit in that bear form, he still has, you can see his other defensive cooldown, the heal there on his bar. He's not even going to have to trade that one out. Actually gets caught up in a cheeky Polymorph there. Unusual for a Moonkin to be caught up in that one, Ben. Yeah, definitely. Zero now into a kidney shot. Looks like Nick and Tyber look for some damage, but a nice Cyclone coming in from Flop. Will deny that damage and offense from Neat. So that was nicely done by Flop. Swack just sitting in south, and you can see this is how Shore's going to win. They're going to win with nice crowd controls. They're not going to have super big consistent damage. They need their stun locks. They need their crowd control. They need the burst damage. So Swack, he can afford to just sit in south and wait to pick his moment. Yep, and we can see Nick being unrelenting, trying to deny that as much as possible. As we see another clean setup coming out of Shore, you can see the triple crowd control there, forcing the trinkets out of both the DPS once again. So now they have a very clear opening here on the side of Shore. This next setup, if they can set it up cleanly, could well be the game, though Tiber will have his bark skin, so a potential swap to Nick could be on the cards here for this Rogue Mage Druid composition. Swax and Serral, they're playing on top of Kolik. They're trying to be aggressively positioned so that they're always threatening, always looking for the crowd control so that they can get these goes as often as possible and not allow the rotation that Neat wants to go into a later game. Yeah, I like the way Shore is playing. It's like I said, it's very clinical. They're not messing around with an assassination rope with a Moonkin. They are going to lose that exchange unless they have their crowd control. So I like when they just pull back. They wait for a little bit of a reset. You can see Sierra looking for Polymorph right now. Gets interrupted. Nice win here from Korlek. Nice Cyclone as well from Tiber. Now if they get CC on a flop, this is an opportunity for them to maybe pull out the first Ice Block on the Cyril, but doesn't look like they're going to be able to find it. Um, unfortunately, flop uh, very far away. And if we look Look at mana. Flop is not doing that great. He's down to around 30% mana. Here's a nice triple setup from uh, Shore once again, blinding up Korla. He trinkets out. That's a very fair trade, but now we're in a situation where neat no one on their team has a trinket and we have damage coming up for sure they have the ice form you know shadow blaze coming up in 45 seconds they have a window of opportunity where they can easily take someone down yeah and i, I would argue that's a small mistake on the side of need as well they trinket for the blind that's a fair exchange but they also committed the bark skin to that one so they won't have anything for this next go and here it is short looking for the setup can they follow up there's no crowd control on nick and he denies everything so a huge play from nick there keeping his team in the fight and that's big because flop is so low on that blue bar he's going to start struggling in this game ice form was committed to that go van and they do not find the kill yeah korlek to his credit as well he preemptively dropped the earthen shield totem and now swacked is in a lot of trouble as he runs away ironbark has been committed as well as the tree of life from flop and this is the last little bit of mana and cooldowns flop has available for his team neat looks like they found their rhythm in this matchup so far so it's been having to play a lot more defensive their setups aren't looking nearly as clean and i really like the adaptations coming in from neat yeah, and because he committed the incarnation there, it means he won't have it for the incarnation of Tiber, which we now see pop. So the next 30 seconds, this Moonkin is going to be a very scary prospect on the side of Need. He comes out of the ice block there. Sarah will be on hypothermia. They're looking for the setup, but Trinket and Sparkskin coming out. Here comes the Vendetta. Neat are looking to pick up the game here as Cloak of Shadows traded out on Swax. I'd love to see them swap over to Cyril, try get a little bit more crowd control into Flop. It could secure the game. Yeah, Swax still low. Flop really having to play catch up with the Iron Bark, just throwing 
clearing it out. Unfortunately, not the best moment. Just wanted to top off Swag by the Houston. Really no threat. Now that's not available for Cyril. If they decide to make a swap over on him, Korlek getting caught into the Vortex flop. Looking like he wants to push in for a Bash Cyclone. Unfortunately, yeah. unable to find it. Yeah, he baited out the oven shield yep. totem by walking in, though. So a big play from Flop there, reading Korlek. And Korlek now won't have that major defensive cooldown available. However, they have got the Trinkets rotating back. Trinket Spirit Link, of course, a big one. Here is the blind. They might look for that cooldown here. He Trinkets out. Smoke Bomb. I'd love to see the Spirit Link before the Polymorph, but he's able to win share it. Cheap shot now. This is risky. If they land this Ring of Frost, they could end the game here. Cross crowd control. Nick Trinkets out. Tiber in trouble. Caught up in the bear form. Renewal should keep his health stable. And now they can go for the counter push with the beam on Flop. Yes, yeah, Cyril still looking for the Ebon. Well, Cyril getting low, though. Needs to go into the Ice Block. He's not going to have another one available for quite some time. And nicely done by Tiber. Still has the Bark Skin as well. Swack looking like he could be in some trouble. And Flop, he just has no mana to work with. There's the full bash. Temporal Shield's going to be available for Cyril to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Throws out a counter spell over onto Tiber. Tiber, he's relatively safe right now with the Bark Skin to push in and be a little bit aggressive. I feel like neat. they really have short on the ropes at this point in the match. They, I don't think it's that risky for them to push in. Yeah, health bars waning on the side of Shaw. Mana non-existent. The entire team is dying. Swack 20%. Serral 50. Flop 50. Flop trying to get away. Looking for a drink to restore some of that mana, but he just won't get the opportunity. Tiber and Nick unrelenting. This is their win condition. They've made it too dampening. They know this is where they win the game. They've just got to execute at this moment in time, and they will. And Neat pulls back one map. And it comes down to having those adaptations. And you called it out throughout the cast. Zico, for anybody who was... Then you get a bash sheep and you win. If Nick Trink gets, you can maybe win in the smoke bomb. So if Tiber, he can just sit it, bark skin, and then use his renewal, right? You don't force a trinket. And the trinket is the main objective here for the Rogue Mage Druid. And you know what they're going out for? Two to one elimination series. Sure can send Neat Pack in here. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely can. And I mean, sure, sure they've shown their strategy, right? Like, they could go for the uh, every setup's going to be perfect kill on Nick. And I mean, I completely agree with Zico that that would be a viable swap. Or they can just sit on Tiber, play that slightly slower game where the Moonkin's not doing as much damage, not doing as many Cyclones, and win that way. Definitely both strategies will work. It comes down to them making sure that they're clean, making sure they're playing around these urban wall totems, and just making sure that they get the crowd control crisply every time. Yes, yeah, Swack committing his Vanish now, throwing a blind on a Korlak. Here's a big setup once again over on a Nick. Tiber gets interrupted. Korlak has to trick it out. In the meantime, though, Cyril getting exceptionally low. Ironbark going to get thrown out onto him. Tiber almost destroy him, taking him down to 5% HP, but Tiber could be in a little trouble now, jumping into the Earthen Shield totem. That should be enough to keep him stable. Yeah, and they're swapping it over onto Swack. He trinkets out. I think, actually, no, there was the enemy smoke bomb, so the smoke bomb committed by Nick there, trying for that all-in kill with the incarnation. And this incarnation from Tiber, if you're playing on the ladder against the Moonkin, watch out for that cooldown. Put him on focus. Make sure you play around that because it is one of the most scary cooldowns in the game. And Shaw almost paid out for not respecting that cooldown. Yeah, I mean, there's no question about it. We saw in the previous games, sure, they ran away from the incarnation. This time, they were able to get so much done. Tiber just really, look at Swack. He has no vanish. He has no trinket. He has no nothing. Here's a setup from Shore. In the meantime, Ciro kidney shot once again, and the setup, it gets denied. Now, Neat's going to be completely fine for now. There's a Cyclone over onto Flop. Corlux mana is a little bit worse, but I don't think it's really going to matter. Swack could be in some trouble here. He gets bashed up. No trinket available. If he gets caught into a resound, it could be good night for sure. As they look to tie know. up the series. <laughs> Spam purges coming out from Colic, and that's going to be that. Yep, you get Innervate from the Boomkin, and that allows you to just spam out those purges that are normally very inefficient. They cost a lot of... Better and better for them, but I still think that Shaw's got this. I think this Rook Mage Druid with a little bit more clean play can definitely take this matchup. Yeah, but Neat, they've been doing a great job. Tiber with that incarnation has been so deadly, so look for him to generate more pressure. I want to see Shaw really respect that a little bit more, play more defensive, because Cyril almost went down in the start of that game, trying to get aggressive over on a Nick. Uh, Tiber had excellent counter pressure. Yep, so we have to see how the opener looks. The opener last game was fantastic for Neat. They got the incarnation to full effect, forced a bunch of cooldowns, and more importantly, forced Shaw to be a defensive team. This game, it's looking different, though. Korlux already trinketed, caught up in that full polymorph. Now they're getting pressure over onto Tiber, forcing out the uh, Bark Skin. Now they forced a bunch of cooldowns. They've got to be respectful of the incarnation should it come out here. I'd love to see them take up defensive positioning preemptively and set up for that next go.
Yeah, there's a really good opportunity for sure here. Cyril still has his ice form, so a lot of that burst. If they just wait 10 seconds for that Comet Storm Ice Nova to come back up, they get some CC on Korlik, they get some uh, offensive pressure over on a Tiber. That could be an opportunity, but Swag to getting cloned on the kidney shot. Cyril, though, popping the ice form. He's looking to get aggressive all by himself on a Tiber, but Tiber realizing the situation goes into Ooh. Bear. They make a swap over on a Nick. Nick Trinkets uses the Cloak of Shadows. He's going to be able to survive, but that was a nice uh, adaptation by Shore when that go got a little bit messed up. Yeah, that was a really nice adaptation because I think at first they wanted Korlek, then they're like, okay, we got Cyclone, let's go Tiber, and then they end up going Nick, but they got the cooldown, they got the Trinket. So now I'd love to see them return to Nick later in the game. No Trinket on him, no Trinket on Korlek, but they will, of course, have to save that counter spell on Cyril to deny the incoming Cyclones from Tiber. That's going to be a big thing to watch, expecting him to hold on to that until their next attempt at crowd control over onto the side of Neat. We'll be watching Swack closely to see how he pushes in on Korlek. You see him running in right now. Yeah, Nick and Tiber, they're playing defense right now. There's the kidney shot on Korlek. Zero looking like he wants to land the polymorph. Unfortunately, gets kidney shot, and now Korlek, he's going to be completely fined. That's a cheap shot into Cyclone over onto Nick. Unfortunately, we didn't see Flop get the follow-up crowd control on the Korlek, and now this go from shore is going to be completely wasted, not able to really pull anything out. It's just so obvious. Korlek, he's just running away from Swack. You have Tiber and you have Nick just playing on top of him to deny any of the goes, and that's the kind of adaptation we needed to see. Korlek, once again, preemptively dropping the Earthen Shield Totem as they make a the swap Nick's over on Nick. He's not in it. A lot of burst damage coming in as they're looking to close out this series. Korlek still into the Polymorph. Evasion up for Nick into the Earthen Shield Totem. Tiber throwing out Cyclone, throwing out Regros, everything he can to keep him alive. That was a really nice attempt from Shore, but <laughs> Nick managed to barely escape. Uh, but it's not over yet. Trouble, yeah. He's still in trouble. The DR Cyclone comes out. Korlek doesn't want to trinket before the blind. He gets the Spirit Link totem off. Close, cool for need. And once again, that was a great setup from Shaw. Just unfortunately, the Urban Shield totem coming down, I think, really was the thing when Nick was able to walk back into that. They're now swapping their damage over to Swax, but shouldn't be anything doing here. You can see a full Polymorph landed once again. I'd love to see him go after Nick here. It looks like they're going to. Trinket's still available for Korlek, but he's holding on to that cooldown. He needs to save it for the blind. Yeah, Swax is reluctant to push in. He's low on HP right now. Now there's a full Cyclone over on the Korlek. Nick trying to escape the best he can, but he's in a lot of trouble. Cloak of Shadows gets used. Korlek caught into the Kidney Shot. He still has his Trinket. As Earthen Shield Totem drops it out, Nick's going to be able to survive, but a nice Cyclone coming in from Flop is going to deny Korlek the opportunity to heal up his team during this Ascendance for just a few short moments, finally securing the heals that he needs. Flop's man is not looking good, though. Shore is definitely on a time limit. They definitely are. I mean, they've had a great game, but they haven't quite been able to find that kill so far. Now I'd love to see Flop change his attention, look for those drinks on the map, but it's small and it's going to make it hard because, of course, the Moonkin will be able to use his Starfall to keep combat on Flop and make it difficult for him to get that reset on his mana pool for the healing going into the later game. They force the Trinket there on Korlek with the blind. That's good for them. There's no Barkskin, there's no uh, Trinket on Tiber. He could be a potential swap opportunity, but as Zika was saying with the Goalkeeper analogy, as long as one of these guys has their Trinket up, they'll be able to potentially stop that incoming crowd control and damage. Nice Cyclone onto Swack. Look at Tiber doing such an incredible job. Korlik gets caught in the crowd control, but unfortunately Swack was in a Cyclone, but this swap is still huge. A lot of pressure coming in from Serial. I don't think Tiber's going to be able to survive this Nick with a beautiful Shadow Step kick, interrupting the Ray of Frost. Tiber gets into bear form and is barely surviving. He actually trinkets out. That was a huge misplay. Korlik was in a polymorph. He trinkets out of the Cyclone. That would have just immuned him. He would have been completely fine, but... I don't know if Shore's going to be able to completely capitalize on that. It looks like Tiber looking to get aggressive now. He uses the beam over onto Flop, denying the incoming Cyclones. He has his uh, yeah, his incarnation up as well. He's going to be popping that, looking for some counter pressure over onto Swack, who's committed every single one of his defensives as offense. Yeah, and one of the other things we should talk about there is that Flop did what Restoration Druids should do in Rogue Mage Druid. When his team was playing aggressive, he went to the other side of the map and sat down for a drink. You're not going to kill on every setup, so sometimes use that crowd control to get the free mana back, and that's something they'll need going into dampening. We see, once again, triple crowd control forced as Serral was using one of his first ice blocks there. They forced the bark skin on Tiber, and once again, they have that little 20-second window. No bark skin, no trinket on Tiber, and no trinket on Korlek. Yep. Now it looks like Neat, they want to get a little bit aggressive. Korlok's man is looking really good, really healthy. <laughs> the thing is, when you're caught into that crowd control, you're actually regenerating mana when you're not forced to heal. That's one of the benefits, I guess, of getting yeah, crowd controlled by a <laughs> rogue mage druid, is at least you potentially win the mana advantage. So you're looking to get aggressive with the ice form now, dropping the frozen orb. There's a full blind on Korlok. He trickets out. Tiber could still be in a little trouble. No earthen shield totem going to be available. But Korlok smartly runs into the frozen orb. That's going to deny any follow-up polymorphs. Smoke bomb. Gets 
gets dropped, swacked all alone, no trinket. Has the evasion, has the cloak, doesn't want to be too greedy here. Flop commits the iron bark and the trinket and cloak of shadows and evasion. That was just way too late from Swack. If he just committed those cooldowns earlier, Flop could have saved basically everything in that exchange. Yeah, now he has to sit a long crowd control chain. Now Neat gets to push forward. This is game five. The loser of the series is eliminated, and Flop is caught in the hibernate. Fortunately, it breaks up. Whereas the sleeping on the job would have been detrimental to the team as we see Kidney shot over onto Swack. He is gets the feint up preemptively on that one, so well played by him as we see Barkskin forced out on Tiber. It really is all for play for 10% on the dampening counter right now. Kidney shot over onto Kolek. They're actually making a swap over onto this Restoration Shaman, but I don't think they're going to have a quite enough damage. Tiber will be able to get out some Cyclones, help heal for his Restoration Shaman, and Kolek should be fine. Yeah, Flop, I'm curious to see if he decides to sit down for a drink. Nick and Tiber not really allowing him by making these setups over onto Swacked, and now the Swacked is running away. They can all comfortably push in. Garot now onto Serial. Short is really running out of time. No Iron Bark, no Trinket available for Flop. They can make a swap on Swacked or Serial and uh, try to take him down, but it looks like Korlek, he just is reluctant to push in. He wants to, you know, not throw away the game. Doesn't have his Trinket available. It looks like now Flop, he's going to be pushing in full bash into Polymorph. Who is the target of choice? Nick gets swapped, but he preemptively cloak a shadows the cheap shot. Very nicely done. Yeah, and Irvin Shield Totem was put down there as well. We see Swax caught up in the kidney shot. He's actually dropping so, so low. We're in dampening. Flops out of mana. He's really struggling to keep Swax alive here, but he needs to live. We see Purchase coming out, line of sights them. Hex should be able to be decursed, but a nice cycling from Tiber, who's pushing in for the kill here. Swax will fall and neat complete the reverse sweep and advance to the championship Sunday. And you know, this is a series that really could feed versus the fake zebras were all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth